Okay, do you find this disgusting? The IRS has tried to pin its Tea Party targeting scandal on some employees in Cincinnati. But then today, a former IRS lawyer, yes, a lawyer, telling Congress he took orders from way up the chain of command in Washington. Also testifying today on Capitol Hill, a Cincinnati IRS worker, she says she was deeply offended by the blame placed on her office in Cincinnati. Tell me how you felt when Lois Lerner, with a plan in question on May 10th, goes public and says this was inappropriate actions by line people in Cincinnati. Sir, like I said before, it was like a nuclear strike, and um, I still that's think a term, that's a term you used with. With the earlier interviews. With, with your interview with staff. A nuclear Correct. strike. Lois Lerner sat where those two witnesses sit today, several weeks ago. And these two witnesses put on a uniform and fought and defended this country and the Constitution so she could hide behind the Constitution, invoke her Fifth Amendment right, but only after she blamed them. Congressman Trey Gowdy joins us. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? Very well. So after today's hearing, how, far, how high up in the IRS are you suspicious that some of this targeting went on? Well, I want to take a good hard look at the chief counsel for myriad reasons. Number one, he's a political appointee, one of only two. And what we learned today is that the chief counsel... Uh, knew of a guide sheet. Uh, I, want to, I don't want to call it a bolo, but a guide sheet. Um, and he has a background in tax-exempt organizations, so it's not as if he can claim he wasn't aware of what they were doing. He's, he's an expert in it. So I, I want to... I, I, are you we talking know about it goes Mr. To Wilk Washington. Are you talking about Mr. Yes. Wilkins? Mr. Yes, ma'am. Who, incidentally, and just sort of out of curiosity, say he's a political appointee, he and his former law firm, Wilmer Hale, represented... Uh, Reverend Jeremiah Wright's church in a similar tax controversy, right? Uh, for free. Uh, for, free. for free, I might add. For free. Yes. Um, all right. If, okay, so if you want to take a look at the chief counsel, this is what I'd like. If this, I'm appalled that lawyers might be involved, and for some reason, and maybe I'm wrong, I, I think that they have a higher duty. I hope the bar counsel takes a look at it, you know, we, you know, and takes a good look at what these, what these lawyers are up to, if they're up to no good. I don't know how you feel, but bar counsel could have some influence. All right. What is the suggestion um, that the chief counsel's office did or might have done? Um, well, the, the chief counsel, I mean, keep in mind, we've had political activity in this country since before it was founded, and the numeric code hasn't changed, so 50% means what 50% has always meant. So why the additional scrutiny in 2010? Why? There's nothing no, novel about these legal issues. There's nothing extraordinarily complex about these applications. Why did you have to get Washington involved in the chief counsel's office to approve pretty innocuous 501c4 applications? Mr. Hull's been doing it for 48 years, Greta. He's been doing it since the year I was born. So why is he having to send to Washington to get permission to, to approve an application that he's been approving for 48 years? And why are the lawyers so cowardly that they want to let the Cincinnati take the, the fall on this, and they've all been sitting there like deaf mutes and not saying a word, hoping that others would take the fall on them? What about that? Well, they thought they could get away with it, and the more people that come forward, like Ms. Hoffaker and Mr. Hull, uh, the more fo we, we've interviewed eight people in Ohio, eight people in Washington. One thing we know for sure, even Jay Carney should be aware of this by now. It wasn't two rogue agents in Ohio. It, the, the District of Columbia office's fingerprints are all over this scandal. So we, we've interviewed eight in Ohio, eight in, in, in the District of Columbia. We need to keep interviewing folks, people that have knowledge and are willing to come forward. But, you know, we had two former soldiers two public servants today who did have to withstand congressional questions while Lois Lerner invokes her Fifth Amendment privilege, falsely accuses them, and never has to give an accounting for her role in it. So I'm understanding of people who are reluctant to come forward, but if we're ever going to find out everyone that's involved, then anyone with firsthand knowledge needs to come to the Oversight Committee. Congressman, thank you, and I look forward to see whether or not there's ever a discussion about a special prosecutor as well as, as this gets investigated. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am.